are the pinnacle of the entertainment. Obviously, the character was incredibly entertaining, the Million Dollar Man. But also, you are, and I think this gets lost a little bit amongst us, Marks. How are you doing out there, Mark? This gets us, it gets lost a little bit, the amazing technical wrestling you were capable of. You were a great technical wrestler. Do you think that today it's become too much entertainment and not enough sport? I do. Interesting. I do. I mean, I, I you know, you, I, maybe I'm just old school. And I know that, I mean, I know there's a lot of things that change. And I know there's a lot of things that I haven't, you know, you know, I haven't been around uh, the company for a while um, that cause, ca you know, there, there are causes for change that, that, mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm, I'm aware of. I'm certain of that. But, you know, even from, from fans that I talk to, uh, like the guys like Mike and I who wrestled in the 80s and the early 90s. I hear it all the time. You guys are the last great era of wrestling. Mm. And because it was still about the wrestling, it wasn't about, you know, uh, the blow up in, 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 in the locker room or the story backstage or, or whatever. You know, it wasn't all the talk. It wasn't the, the it wasn't the soap opera drama. It was the match. Ultimately, it was the match. I mean, our interviews back then, we didn't have you know fifteen and twenty minute interviews. Mm. We had three minute, four minute interviews for the towns. You know, and we might have two or three of those. But, you know, but building up to, to it. To be fair, though, you had better storylines back then. Every match had a really good storyline yeah. to it that got the fan involved, and yeah. obviously the match right. was the finisher, right? Yeah. I think that's what's missing right now. I mean, Mike, you've got children presently working in there right now, and I think, believe you worked as an agent. Are you still working as an agent? For no, them? I did it for almost 13 and a half years. I just finished up this year. So how how's your feelings with that, like the comparison? Yeah, I mean, it's changed a lot, and it's hard to go on TV and tell a story wrestling if you have a five-minute segment or a six-minute segment. Mm -hmm. and an entrance or two entrances you know it's like a fast forward boom 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 we're done and i think time because a lot of these a lot of the talents there i did a lot of live events and they have 15 minutes or 18 minutes to tell like that and i think they do so much better in that atmosphere because they're not under the gun you know and and they have to fit so much into TV because there are a lot of interviews and backstage and you know vignette type situations then the matches aren't the concentration it, it more time should be given to that so you can tell a story wrestling in a match you know and it doesn't have to be a three-minute short story i think so. so as an agent when you would say that what they just said no that's no, not the way it works it's, it's not the way it works you know you're basically told what what they want and you work with the talent and then you work within your lot a lot of time you know because there's a lot of different aspects that go into the sponsorships they have to do this they got to have this we have to advertise for our pay-per-views blah 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 you know whatever and you know some matches will have two or three segments you know but there's going to be a, a bigger match obviously and it, but it, to me that's just hard to, unless you're doing a squash match it's hard to have any kind of competitive match in a short period of time like that and basically that's what we used to do years ago was have a squash match you were the guy and i'm gonna i'm gonna get 98 percent of this match you just hang on kid you know what i mean right. mm -hmm. and well, that's how you got yourself over we say that all the time though but back in the day when we grew up on wrestling right like morocco and backland would have an hour broadway at the garden but you know right. there was a lot of slowdowns right on bars do you think today's audience just can't stand well for that. yeah because they're programmed from television not to see that you know what i mean mm. then it's boring to well them. i you know i i say yes and no i know that uh I, I know when i was working again for bill watts in mid-south you know you know he noticed that a lot of us were he says i'm seeing a lot of high spots high spot high spot high spot you know he said he said, uh, so he took me and Terry Gordy, and he says, you guys are the main event all week. 
he said, I want you to go 55 minutes and then give him the finish. He says, number one, a lot of the, the what we call the smart marks uh, are going to say, okay, they're going Broadway. And you're really going to screw them more or less when they go, oh, wow, they, they went that long. And yeah. So, but he said, the idea is you can't have a 55 minute match and be bouncing around the ring all the time. You have got to settle down and tell a story. Mm. And that's what Bill was getting at. And so I, 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 you know, I agree with Mike. I said, but, you know, for, and it might be, and for the talent today, it, through no fault of their own, they haven't been exposed to what Mike and I were, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And in, in terms of the way they have been taught the business, we were we were taught the business doing it. We're in the ring with a polished professional who's leading us by, around by the nose, and he's got 15 or 20 minutes, you know, for us to start to understand how this this whole thing and works. And 15 or 20 years of experience. Yeah, exactly. And so the the, the young talent today, they don't have that, and. Uh, you know, and that's why it's kind of like when I, you know, how long were you there, Mike? 13, said 13 years. Producing? Producing. Yeah. You know, um, and I I left and I've been doing my ministry and I, uh, I mean, I got a call from Arn. And this was back in 05 and 06, 05. Arn said, uh, uh, the, the company uh, asked me to give you a call. They'd like you to come back to work. I started laughing. I said, do what? <laughs> And uh, and he said, well, you know, says like, you know, being part of the creative team, you know, and I, you know, I actually had a conversation with Stephanie. I said, Stephanie, I said, I'm not Clint Eastwood. <laughs> Clint Eastwood's good on both sides of the camera. I said, my gift is you tell me what you want to happen, and I can go out there in the ring and I can make the story happen. That's my gift, you know, but it was it. You know, and I were I I did it for about a year and a half, and and uh, I just couldn't. And I don't know if if it's I couldn't or I wouldn't. You know, mm. uh, just because of the way I was taught and everything. For me to sit down with two wrestlers and map out an entire match, just made no sense. I said I can't do that. I can't do that because I never did it. In other words. The real art form of what we did was improv. It's like, oh yeah, I, I know the finish. I know exactly how it's going to end. That's a setup for the next show. And if I have a little history with you, in other words, if we'd already had a couple matches, we might go, okay, based on what the people saw last time, maybe we should start this way tonight. But all that stuff in the middle of the start and the finish was organic. But so, how about with Randy at WrestleMania that's what 4? Because Randy yeah. always was notorious for having a blueprint. Did he have a blue? I got this great okay, match here right okay. here, Ted. Right. That's and that's the, the first time I ever did that. And I, and I told Randy too. And uh, it was funny because Liz was was sitting there. I said, Randy, I said, listen. I said, I, I understand <laughs> what you want to do. And I said, that's fine. I said, but give me this leeway as we're doing this. If something comes to me as we're as we're on this on this track, let me call it, and we're going to come right back to this. Can you do that? Mm. You know, he just kind of looked up at Elizabeth. Said, "Brandy, you can do that." And he's okay, brother. We can do it. <laughs> and so we went out and, and tore the house down. Wow! And, uh, but, and oh. but basically stuck to the game plan. But there was, right. I just flew uh, threw in a couple of things that that weren't planned. Nice. So, Mike, you've just come off the working with them. Uh, can you guys weigh in? Got a lot of pro wrestling experts out there that are always defending the wrestlers, saying, while we're on break, everybody, uh, Farrell was talking to Ted about superstar Billy Graham, who mm -hmm. seems to be still, we discussed last week, still mm -hmm. angry over losing to Bob Backlund in 1978. I yep. don't know why, but yep. anyway. Um, and a lot of these experts still talk about how unfairly wrestlers are being treated, that they're really not independent contractors. And then the most recent occurrence of the WWE saying, hey, look, you cannot use your name as a third to use third party social media to generate revenue for yourself, your, your wrestling name or whatever contract you signed for. You guys want to weigh in on both those subjects? Well, 
first of all, I don't know anything about what Billy Graham said and don't care. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, Fair enough. you know, the wrestling business is what it is, and if you agree to get in it, there's going to be rules, whether I'm saying it's right or wrong, there's going to be rules for any company you work for. So unless unless things change, you have to deal with that, you know. And I, I know that some of these guys and girls are making a lot more money than I made in the wrestling business. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be too unhappy about it, you know. I, I would kind of work around it and deal with it because, like I said, I mean. It, Go try to find another job somewhere. It's not that easy to to make the kind of money you can make working for a WWE, you know. And unfortunately, is it perfect? Probably not. But you know, you're going to deal with that kind of thing in in anything. There's going to be upsides and downsides. So I'm not going to jump on the 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 mass wagon and and try to bury it, you know. Especially I have two two of my kids work there you know so sure and i'm glad that they're able to, to to be there at this time so well and and uh you know it's it's kind of like uh they're not the only game in town anymore uh sure. there is some competition now and i i've always said competition is good for business mm -hmm. competition ultimately is good for for the talent because because there is some you know you know, competition is always good for anybody because it's kind of like, you know, like uh, when my kids were playing soccer, uh, I knew some parents that wanted to put their kids on a uh, on a team where their their child could be the star. I wanted to put my kid on a team that was good to where there was some people that were better than them out there, so that would make them better. Make them better. Th that was the whole thing. Competition is always good for business. Right. Uh, but but still, the WWE is, is still. The biggest game in town, and and uh, you know whether whether you went to work for one company or another company, they they are going to have their rules, and you know, it's kind of like the main dollar man. The main dollar man character is a property of the WWE. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I did have I do have an agreement with them. You know, from years ago, you know, I asked for permission. To use the the character as it pertained to and in pursuit of my ministry. In other words, can I can I well at least can I ask these churches to you know advertise me as the WWF sure. Million Dollar Man? Mm -hmm. And so they wrote off on that. So any, anything that I mean that's why. So Vince didn't give you a hard pro didn't give you an issue with that. No, not on that. No, and and so that's why I can I could I can have a Million Dollar Man you know website. Because I, I, you know, I use that for wrestling, but I also use that to advertise where I'm going to be, where I'm going to be speaking, and, and things like that. So you know, it's not like you can't, you know. Um, and and I and again, I would rather I would rather be in a position where I'm working with the company, as as opposed to butting heads with them. Because you know, Mike and I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now if if it hadn't been for Vince McMahon and what he did for the wrestling industry. Thank you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you. You know, we go head to head constantly with people who absolutely hate Vince McMahon. So I have to ask you guys while I have you here. And they hate Vince McMahon, a lot of them, because they feel that the old timers, quote unquote, the guys from the past, are not taken care of by Vince currently. That there should be pensions, there should be medical benefits, and all these other things that are obviously sensitive issues. Do you guys feel Vince owes the old timers a living? Well, in my opinion, that would be nice to have something like that. Fair enough. But in the real world, it, not everything is perfect, like I said. Absolutely. You know? And at some point, you just got to move on and, and, you know, and, and find happiness within yourself. I, I actually was out of the wrestling business for three years, and I ran a car lot for my uh, father-in-law. My wife and him got in a fight, and then I was no longer at the car lot. Mm. You know, they got an argument, which they rec you know, regrouped later. But that's I called up John Laurinaitis and uh, Jerry Briscoe, and I went back to work for Vince. You know, as a producer, um, 
and it worked out. I got a good run out of it, you sure. know, a 13 year run. So I can't complain and and complaining does no good anyways, you know, and I could have, I just turned 63 years old. I could have worked a couple more years as a producer and retired at 65, but I made it this far and decided, you know, they let me go. And I said, there's not a problem with that. I've had enough. It's been a good run. And yeah, it's, it's been, been a good run. run. And 23 more years on top of it, you know, wrestling over the years. So, mm -hmm. you know, I can't complain. We got about we got about fifteen minutes left. Um, fan out there, Nate is asking, uh, do you have any Rick Rude stories? Oh. Rick Rude, not really. Nothing. 